Welcome to the show where we take a look at someone's past month spending and the income that came in, see how that all comes together to meet the financial goals they're trying to achieve or get over the financial obstacles that are holding them back. Make sure you're subscribed as one of the first 50,000 subscribers here will win $1,000. My name is Caleb Hammer and today we are meeting with Lexi. Lexi, how old are you and where are you based out of? Um, I am 30 and I am out of um, Sparta, North Carolina. And what do you do there for a living? Um, I am a middle school band and chorus director. Oh, I was a music major. I did see that when I Googled you, so um, I thought that was awesome. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a composer, um, and yeah, I've kind of slowed that part of my life down, but uh, no, that's really cool. Well, what do you bring in on a yearly basis? Um, I just We just got a raise in North Carolina, so um, I'm up to 41000 now. Now, I bet you work a lot of, like, extra hours, don't you? Um, Not too bad. Um, Last year and the previous three years, I taught um, high school band, so I was doing marching band and all that stuff, so I was working a lot extra. Um, I We have, like, concert um, rehearsals and stuff, but it's not as bad as high school. Um, I get to go home most days after school, which is really nice. Um, so when we get closer to concerts, it's a lot more hectic, but most of the time it's not as bad. Right, right. Cool. Well, what do you think some of the financial struggles or goals you're trying to achieve right now are that I might be able to help with? Um, so the biggest thing is this is like it, within the last three years, three or four years, um, I finally have like a salary before I was teaching my first couple of years, I was hourly. Um, and now I find I finally feel like I'm in a spot where I can start saving money. Um, but I have a really bad Amazon habit. <laughs> so, um, you know, my money kind of depletes very quickly. Um, so I'm trying to save, but I guess I'm just not really great at saving. Okay. I'm curious. Have you, if like, if it's so easy to recognize the Amazon habit, why have we not deleted our Amazon prime account and just deleted the app? So I actually share my Amazon prime with my, um, my dad, and my sister. So, um, they use it too. I've actually deleted the app for my phone, so it has gotten better. Um, I just deleted it like maybe a month or so ago, so it's gotten better um, where I have to actually go to the website, I have to buy something. Um, but so yeah, it's gotten better, but it's not completely gone because I there are other avenues, of course. So okay, well let's take a look at your money and uh, see where we can make some improvements. So we have a checking account. Uh, was this a, uh, you, you make a little bit from PayPal? I'm sorry, um, not PayPal, eBay? eBay on the side, so I have got some, like, eBay um, stuff, so that's probably part of eBay. Uh, and then, yeah, eBay, eBay, eBay. This is great, because it's, like, 95 bucks, 21 bucks, 30 bucks, 45 bucks. Like, heck yeah. And here's another one, 126 uh, 11 bucks and $12 and a dollar 42 cents. Oh, internet credit transfer. Something that immediately stuck out. I was, I was looking over this. Ew, what are we doing? What are we doing? Cause now there's another one. Uh, that was my Amazon credit card. I hadn't used it since then. Um, because I was charging a lot more than I realized. And I was like, okay. And that's when I deleted the app and I was like, okay, I need to stop. <laughs> yeah. That's not what stuck out to me though. What stuck out to me was while I was going through this, is there were two different times where overdraft protection came in. Yeah, and I don't overdraft very often, and I I don't remember how that happened. I think it might have been at, like, because I, I get paid monthly, so I, like, take half my paycheck and put it in savings and then give myself the other half of it. So it's kind of like I get paid every two weeks, and I think it might have been in the middle of that, possibly. I don't remember what happened. Mm, okay, and that screams not having a budget. I'm, I'm, I'm really, I, I, I downloaded like an, a, a spreadsheet somewhere and I was like re really ready to do it. And then I never filled it out. So yeah, I, I did use, I said, I did start using mint because I've been watching your videos and I saw that you suggested mint. Yeah. Mint should sponsor me. Yeah. That, yeah. I, I, I don't think I've been using it long enough for it to like, cause it still, it has like, it's still kind of working out the kinks. Um, so I think I just need to use it longer for it to. Um, kind of work a little bit better for me. So let's take a look at some of the spending. Yeah, definitely some Amazon purchases. We have a Wendy's purchase. And 
And then were Mayor Mayberry takeout, you're withdrawing or check 25 bucks. So we can't see where that went. And yeah, that's my um, my garbage is $25 a month. And Amazon and Amazon and Amazon. Yikes. There's a Discover e-payment. Ingles Markets, eBay. We want you to be making money off of eBay, not spending $30 on eBay. National Board. What is that? Two charges, 79 bucks each. National Board. My uh, National Board certification, so they're charging me um, every month. I did I ended, I did the loan, so there I had to buy or do the thing first, and then they gave me the loan and reimbursed me. I just haven't paid that off yet. Uh, more eBay purchases and sending Venmo out and ATM withdraw 43 bucks and Wendy's. So, uh, music and arts for $93. That's what I don't like. Is that that I uh, repaired my personal clarinet? So that was just a one time thing. Okay. And that that's fine. Uh, what I, what I don't like was the overdraft fee, but that free day, that was uh, zero cents. There was nothing there. Point of sale. <laughs> yeah, there's Amazon. So we're definitely seeing repeat customer a couple times Wendy's, but lots of Amazons. Prime Video, Sheets, Instacart. That's an expensive way to grocery shop. There's the overdraft uh, transfer from savings of 50 $50. A pickup so it's only like three dollars a pickup so it's not too bad but i hate going in the store and more prime video and paypal and out jw pepper i recognize that uh they can they pay their composers nothing so i don't recommend shopping from jw pepper but yes there's not really a good alternative though oh there are you just gotta look i'll send them to you <laughs> Uh, Venmo, eBay. Oh, but that eBay was in, that Venmo was in. So, again, Amazon, Wendy's, KFC, Amazon, PayPal. There's, that's, that's, the month can be summed up by, like, Wendy's, Amazon. Uh, so, we definitely see the repeat uh, things now that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing, you know. Uh, sure, it's a lot. The purchases aren't insanely expensive for what it is. Like uh, for the last Amazon Aretta, it was three dollars twenty-seven cents, and the Wendy's was ten dollars. What matters is what does your overall financial situation look like. So we'll loop around to that. But first, I do want to know about this eBay little side hustle that you have going on. Tell me about that. Um. So I started when I was doing my student teaching because. Um, we weren't like technically allowed to have a job or whatever. Um, and I couldn't really work because, you know, we had to do this full time thing without getting paid. Um, so I started doing it then and it was just mostly like going to Goodwill and flipping stuff. Um, but now I've been getting into like buying stuff online and flipping it because, you know, you can find stuff on Facebook marketplace or whatever. Um, and then I'm selling a bunch of my boyfriend's video games. He's like a video game nerd. So he has a bunch of old, like, um, N64 games and stuff that stuff that has been selling really well a bunch of like Mario and other stuff um, So that's where all the Venmo is that's paying him for the stuff that I'm selling on eBay um, So it's kind of hit or miss some months, you know, I probably yield I don't I didn't really do the math on it, but it's probably five or six hundred dollars a month um, And then other months it's slower. So it kind of just depends on how much I list each month and how much the sales are Sure now, you also have a Discover credit card. Do you ever hold balances? Um, no, I pay that off. That, the Discover, because I've had a really bad thing with credit cards, I don't know, like eight or so years ago. Um, so I only use it for like Netflix. All the like reoccurring stuff, Netflix, Hulu, my electric bills, stuff, everything is all, all the re reoccurring stuff is on there. Um, I, I've used it a couple times for like gas, but for the most part, it's just those reoccurring bills. Okay, I haven't looked at what's coming out, but $901 purchases, that would be a lot of reoccurring. So let's see. I immediately see, like, yeah, Hulu, Ring, what, Every Plate. That's expensive. Uh, yeah, I have a, a meal kit that I do every week because I hate grocery shopping and I hate cooking, so it makes it easier for me. It's, it's, I, I, it's probably, I mean, I kind of, 
did the math sort of and it was a, it ended up being about the same with how much groceries are and it was just quicker than just grocery shopping and I could just have it delivered to me. There's an Apple Pay for Main Street. Was that another service or was that just a one-time purchase? Main Street? Um, that's a one-time one. I'm not sure what that is, but that's a one-time And KFC is certainly a one-time, and there are some Netflix. And there's more every plate. There's every plate, as I can tell, adding up. Hardee's? That is not reoccurring. Teachers, uh, pay teachers.com. I can, I can, I assume that's reoccurring, especially with the dollar amount, four ninety nine. dollars 99 oh, well, Wendy's, Sheets, Every Plate, Apple Subscriptions, Pirate Ship Postage. Now there's insurance, uh, so that one definitely makes sense. Yeah, the Pirate Ship is with the eBay stuff, yeah. That just goes to that card. Blue Ridge Energy, yeah, that makes sense. And Every Plate. Oh, that's an Every Plate continued. And yeah, there's some gas from Speedway and more postage and postage and... Apple.com, another subscription there, and eBay spending eighty-one dollars there. So I don't know. That was a that's a lot of spending. Um, man, forty-one thousand dollars a year pre-taxes. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Like, um, every I think every month it's about three thousand after taxes, and then I have to put five hundred away for the summer. So. Oh. Oh, they don't split it out? Um, they used to, but they don't do that. That's why I got the um, account with the credit union, because they do a payroll deduction, so they take it out of each check. So really 2500 then. Now, all of a sudden, 900 on this card of nothing except for the energy and in the insurance, but nothing else was a necessity. That's 900 out of 2,500 is a lot. And then if we look at how many Amazon purchases, like the percentage that is going to this kind of crap we don't need, we're not liking that. But I see a good thing and then a bad thing going forward. Let's look at the good thing first, the retirement, and then we will get into the student loans. So retirement, pre-tax contributions. Is it showing the 2022 salary so far or... Why is it 30,000 versus the 42,000 from 2021? I think it's because that was, yeah, that was a statement I just printed out recently. Um, so that might be, so I think that's probably the so far one. I'm not real sure. I just got access to that retirement not that long ago, so I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah, only three years. 6,000, I would want that to be higher than $6,425. For three years well they um they take out six i contribute six percent and then after five years they considered me fully vested and then the state puts in 24 percent so that's cool after how many years after five years so i've got two more years left and then they'll put in so it'll be 30 percent with my contribution in two more years yeah 30 percent pre-tax so forty-one thousand. and then it goes next year my salary will be whatever the the budget is next year now, what kind of fund is this in? I know this is this is in some kind of. I have no idea. I I don't know really anything about retirement. Well, what I'm trying to calculate is like what kind of return this gets. I know these kind of funds typically have less return than like the S and P 500. So, I twelve thousand three hundred after five years is what would be contributed essentially on a yearly basis. So let's do some math around that. I mean, that's good if it returns. Yeah, that twelve, or that twenty-five percent that the thing gives once you're fully vested is insane. That's incredible. That like incredible. But um, if it returned like the S and P five hundred in today's money, by the time you retire, you'd have one point seven million dollars. But I know. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I I know that these funds tend to return less than that. I don't know what the return is. So let's just say it returns even 2% less. All of a sudden, it's a million, 1.1 million, you know? If it returns 3% less than the S&P 500, we're, we're talking in today's money, so pre-inflation, 
but if it's 3% less than the S&P 500, then only $964,000 in today's money. So I, I don't know what the average return is for what this is. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure because, like I said, I don't really know anything about retirement. <laughs> yeah, that makes yeah. a big difference. Yeah, like, I feel like I'm too young to think about it, but I guess I'm not. Yeah, see, I, I, again, I don't know what the return is, but it's immediately worse than what we talked about. It's calculating. This is the North Carolina Teachers Retirement Calculator on their own website. $2,181 in today's money would be your maximum allowance on a monthly basis. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't, but it is their own website, and we did use... How many years you've been in it? What your average salary has been these last three years? Your sick days, your age, when you're set to retire. That's what it says the maximum allowance is. Um, I have no choice but to go off of that at this point. There will be social, well, hopefully, there will be social security on top of that. Of course, it's hard to rely on just that. Both of these combined, you could have something halfway decent, but who knows what the value of the dollar will be at that time as well so uh, we might want to start doing something else but we will talk about that first oh no oh no i swiped into the bad thing and the bad thing's bad oh no was it the loans where'd you go to school <laughs> so um i did my undergraduate state school in pennsylvania and then I went to a private school for my master's degree. Um, and then I did a certificate in music technology that was also a state school. Um, oh, no. But wait, but wait, but wait. It's not that bad. Um, so I'm in the public school loan forgiveness program. So I only make payments for 10 years and then the entire thing is forgiven. So it's not that bad. How many more years until 10 years has been hit? Uh, eight. <laughs> I only, I've only been in for two years. Well, the, the program I'm in is for teachers, and it's, like, I only have to make whatever the payment they tell me, and then everything is forgiven. Because there's a couple different ones. There's some that only forgive some of it. The one I'm in is, like, the one that's, I guess, harder to get into um, because you, your school has to um, meet a bunch of criteria. Um, but then everything is forgiven after. And I've never made a payment because we've had the COVID freeze, and then I've been in, you right. know, whatever, the in-school grace period and stuff. It is forbearance. Forbearance ends in two months. It is a payoff amount. Obviously, you won't be doing this because you'll take advantage of that program. Hundred twenty-three thousand. It went because of six uh, rounded up to seven percent interest from a hundred thousand dollars to one hundred twenty-three thousand dollars. What is this monthly payment about to be? Um, I don't know because it says it's been saying zero, and they just transferred it to a different like loan servicer. Um, I have the income base for payment, so. Yeah. It's, I have no idea. It would be without income based repayment a thousand three hundred forty seven. Yeah, I had seen that number. Yeah. That would hurt. <laughs> income based repayment at the start two hundred eighty six dollars. It would ramp up to about seven hundred seventy six by the time it's done. But um it's gonna be we're just gonna say sitting around $300. That would be over 25 years. So we're going to say just on average, because you still have to pay this for eight years, it's going to be like, well, we're just going to say $350 has to, has to go to student loans for you to, you know, meet the minimum, meet the payments in order for it to be forgiven and everything. 350 bucks. That kind of sucks. Off of 2,500 that you are able to live on a monthly basis, 350 is taken away. And then with utilities and everything, what's your rent right now or mortgage or... It is, it just went up, my dad owns my house, so it's, the tag, I guess the taxes went up, it's 470 I think, a month. Well, that's incredible, so that's good. But even still, with that, all of a sudden we're having very little to live off of. And the $500 that you set aside for the summer, does that give you $2,500 a month? Yeah, it does, yeah. Okay, very cool. Good. So, jeez. Yeah, we have a thousand taken away, which is that, and then I do have a car payment um, of three eighty eight, I think, a month. That was my next question. Okay, how much did you say it was? Three eighty eight. Mm, we are not working with much money all of a sudden. What is the payoff amount on this 
car? Um, it's like, I want to say like 25000 I got it last year, so it's still fairly new. That's a very expensive car for your situation. What is the interest rate on this car? Um, it's like 3%. It's pretty low. Good. Might be less than 3 I hope three or less. Three eighty. What's the uh, loan duration? Um, it's like seventy six months. It's really long. That's what. It, that's what I was getting the vibe. What is this car? It's a twenty twenty um, Chevy Equinox. Any other debts? Um, I have some past like credit card stuff in collections, but I'm basically just letting them fall off because it's been like four years and I don't want to touch them right now because that would, yeah. You still have quite a few years to go. I know, but if I touch them now, then I feel like it's just going to reset everything and then be longer. Well, we wouldn't touch it now, but one thing I'm considering, it might make sense, just like repairing the credit a little uh, if a home purchase is ever in the relatively near future because it's still going to take quite a few years for those to fall off. Negotiating... A settlement, like if it's like, well, I don't know, how much is it in total? These credit cards. Um, I I was in a debt like consolidation thing several years ago, so a lot of them got paid off. So maybe like ten thousand or something or less. I don't remember exactly what the number is. So yeah, ten thousand. That might be hard to negotiate it down to a price that you'd be able to actually pay. Do you have an emergency fund? Do you have money anywhere that we have not seen? I would love to have an emergency fund, but I just suck at saving. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like my money, like I said, I feel like my money just kind of disappears, and I'm like, crap, I'm supposed to save. Well, it goes. It all goes to Jeff Bezos and Miss Wendy's herself. <laughs> One, this car payment is a car payment that you can't afford on your budget. It doesn't. It doesn't make sense. Um, what What was the car again? A 2020 Chevy Equinox. Where do you live in relation to this school? Um, I live about 45 minutes away. 45 minutes away? I did live five minutes, but then I moved schools, and now I live 45 minutes. Ah, five minutes would have been great. I would have been like, sell this car immediately. But now 45 minutes, like, what, what do we do? Plus, it's worth probably about $20,000 anyway, so you're already $5,000 in the hole. <laughs> The issue is with the car is um, the where I live it gets really icy, so I needed something with four with all wheel drive, so that's why I got it. Um, the ice here, like in the mountains, it's it's pretty bad, so I needed something that. Dude, I'm from West Michigan. I went to like I think it was like the sixth snowiest university in the country. I always had two wheel drive and not even snow tires. You would survive. <laughs> ah. It's not only that, but we're having trouble because your minimum monthly payment on this is draining a good amount of money from a pretty lackluster uh, $2,500 a month. Luckily, your rent is low. We love that. But the student loan payments that are about to start, you just have, there's like almost no money left. The, okay, reality, full reality of the situation, non-official financial advice. If I were in your shoes, you're going to have to buckle down and kind of eat some crap for a few years. And that's just the reality of it. The, the, the thing is, it's still going to take eight years for this to be forgiven. This car doesn't necessarily make sense to sell, but it's also just weighing down your budget in such a bad way. Man. And then, oh, the things in collections, that's also going to take, like, what, another six years or so, five, six years to yeah, I think the oldest one is like 2017. So I think some of the older ones are going to fall off in a couple of years. There's like one that keeps like popping up, but the rest of them are pretty old. It's a struggle. Okay, again, reality. Not official financial advice. No more meal prep services. No more paying a few bucks to even pick up groceries. No more nothing. This is the cheapest healthy food you can get. We are banning from your computer amazon.com you cannot no more purchases from amazon it's too easy to justify purchases from amazon if you need to buy something that you could get through amazon you're getting it in the grocery store you are physically touching it and you are putting it in the cart and you are seeing the value being rung up at the counter you are budgeting 
You are budgeting. We need you. So unfortunately, you're already setting aside $500 a month. We probably need you to start setting aside an additional $500 a month to get a, a baseline emergency fund started, and it's going to take a good while to get there. These minimum monthly payments are... They're bullying you. They're taking away money that needs to be used for this. That's why the only thing left to touch that is touchable is Amazon in going out to eat or any fun whatsoever. It just it, it can't be done anymore. It really can't. It does not fit in this picture. So you budget. You lay out your minimum monthly payments. How much do you have left from there? Okay. $500 goes to saving for an emergency fund. How much do I have left from there? Okay. That money gets split between groceries. And then if you have a couple dollars extra, then sure. Get like two things from Amazon a month or go to Wendy's a couple times. But like that's the reality situation. What I would rather have is the, the few extra bucks would just go to the car payment. You should start paying down this car as quickly as possible. The 3% interest is where I start getting a little like, eh, it doesn't make mathematical sense. I'm not sure. The minimum monthly payment is so bad for you. Seven years. So I think that is what I would do. I'd make sure you can set $500 aside every month. And maybe I would pull that to, because luckily you do live a pretty cheap rent life type thing. $500. 10 months. $5,000 and then put that $500 a month extra that you're, you, you're used to saving at that point towards this car and try to pay down this car early. It's not going to be paying it super early, but if you can put like 750 bucks towards it instead of 380, like as soon as we can get rid of this month, minimum monthly payment from the low amount of money that you bring in, the better. Because we need you to be able to, if that retirement calculator was even somewhat correct. Like, let's just assume it's wrong. But if it's even in the direction of correct, we need you to start putting money elsewhere so that you have more money to siphon off in retirement because that's not survivable. What are, you, what are your thoughts? What are you, what are you actually going to do? That's what I would do. And I know that sucks and it's hard, but what are you going to do? Um, yeah, I mean, I, you hit the nail right on the head. Um, like I said, I mean, I, I knew... I knew that, like, like yeah, the Amazon was a problem, and yeah, I just need to actually buckle down and do it. I love you for being a music teacher. People like you gave me a reason to go to school because I absolutely despise school, but, you know, band, being a band nerd, band, band geek, gave me a reason to actually go there and at least uh, perform well enough in class to be able to do things like band, so thank you for that. That's awesome. Uh, but, yeah, I, I really hope that you follow what we talked about today. So in a few years, your life looks completely different. But right now, you just don't have money. And I'm sorry. If only they pay teachers better. <laughs> Lexi is certainly in a financial situation that a lot of other Americans are in, where they've racked up a lot of debt. They have a car they can't afford. They have credit cards that they haven't paid. And now, you know, this is in collections. And unfortunately, $41,000 a year. Now, of course, when it comes to income, 48% of Americans make $30,000 or less a year. So she is above that. But the retirement is uncertain from the state's own website that we used. This car is unaffordable. The rent is good, but it's still a minimum payment that is taken away. And these student loans are going to be starting up. And even on the income-based repayment, it's a lot for her income. And she still has to set $500 a month aside just so she can survive in the summertime. This is a difficult situation. I wish her the best of luck. When it comes to the Hammer financial score with the things in collections, with having a car that's unaffordable, with not setting enough money aside for a retirement that's going to actually work in her favor. It's, oh, it's hard. I'm going to say three and a half. I was really between three and four. But I think in a couple of years, if she does what we talked about here, 
could get to where there's an emergency fund, maybe no car payment, retirement's still going to be questionable, cards are still, you know, student loans haven't been forgiven, the cards haven't fallen off the credit, I think she'll still only be at like a five, but we can start from there to get the retirement going and everything like that. So for right now, she's at a 3.5. No, I'm going to say a three actually now after just saying all that stuff. She's at a three out of 10. Um, and hopefully we can get that to a five and just go beyond in the years to come. If she's willing to sacrifice, that's the big question. Make sure you're subscribed for future videos and please feel free to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Share this video with someone you might know because it really helps my channel out. Thanks.